Okay, let's move on to question five. Uh, question five is no longer a wave equation. It's actually a diffusion equation, also sometimes called a heat conduction equation, right? So this is your heat conduction equation, right? Um, so again, let me just highlight the important points of uh, this question. So the important thing is that this is a heat or diffusion equation, right? And for heat and diffu or diffusion equation, you are normally given two boundary conditions. Okay, that means telling you what's happening at the two ends of the domain or the two ends of the rod where the heat is going through. So you are told the T T X, the temperature gradient at x equals to zero is zero, and the temperature gradient dt dx at x equals to L, the other end of the rod, is also equal to zero. Okay. Uh, for diffusion equation, you're normally only given one initial conditions instead of two. Okay. So in the wave equation, you have two. Diffusion equation, only one initial condition. And this is the uh, temperature at t equals to, at time equals to zero. So the initial condition. Okay, so again, uh, take a look at your formula sheet you'll find that the general solution for the diffusion equation is this okay now there's only one difference here uh, the question is given to you in terms of a big T okay not small u here right so when you copy down the general solution okay like what I've done here okay just make sure you write big T here instead of a small u Right, so this is the uh, general solution to the diffusion equation, right? Um, and we start doing the same thing we did as with the wave equation. So first thing is we want to put in the boundary conditions. Okay, so let me call the general solution equation one. Now you can see that the boundary equations needs you to find dt dx. So let's find dt dx. So we have dt dx is equals to right, so you differentiate this with respect to x, you're just left with d here. And for this one you will have uh, plus you differentiate cosine, you will get a negative sine, so it's negative omega a sine omega x and when you differentiate sine you get cosine so you get omega b cosine omega x e to the power minus k omega squared t so this is equation 2 so I'm ready to put my boundary condition 1 okay, which is this one To equation 2. Okay, so I'm going to put x equals to 0 into equation 2. You get minus omega a sine x is 0 plus omega b sine x is 0. e to power minus k omega squared t, right? So this must be equal to zero, right? Because that's what's stated in the boundary condition. So you can now see that um, sine zero is zero, cosine zero is one. Okay, so you have d plus b omega, okay? sine 0 is 1 times e minus k omega squared t and this must be 0 again and this must be 0 for all values of t right so regardless of the time here 
the left hand side must always be 0 so you can see that this means D must be 0 and B must be 0 okay. so you put D and B uh, equals to 0 into your equations uh, 1 and 2 okay going to update it like that. I know B is 0, I know D is 0. Okay, All right. so I know D is 0 and I know B is 0. Okay, alright. condition 2, this one, okay, Good. boundary condition 2, which tells me dt dx, at x equals to big L, it must be 0, and I'm going to put it into equation 2, okay, uh, so remember, uh, b and d are already 0, so this means that when I put x equals to L inside here, I'll just left with minus omega A sine omega L, right? X is L now. Okay. Uh, this term is gone, so this is the only term left. Times E minus to the power minus K omega squared T. And this must be zero. Okay. So again, this must be zero uh, for all values of t. Okay. So it seems again that uh, one way is for a to be zero. Okay. But you can see if you put a equals to zero into your solution. All you're left is your t is just a constant c, right? So you, you don't want that. That's a trivial solution or a useless solution. So the other way to make the left hand side always equal to zero for all values of t is to have your sine omega l to be equal to zero. Now this means that your omega l must be a multiple of pi. Okay, so your omega l must be a multiple of pi. Can be written this way. Okay, pi equals to one, two, three, and so on. Which then means that your Omega is R pi over L. Okay, so now um, I'm ready to put these values of omega uh, back into my solution. solution okay C plus A cos 
cos okay remember what's omega omega is r pi over l okay so cos r pi over l okay x okay so b is zero this is times e to the power of minus k again omega is r pi over l okay so omega squared t all right so again uh, your r takes on the value of one two three and so on okay so so every every value of r gives you one solution right? so you want all the solutions just like in your wave equation and just like what I've explained uh, in the lecture so r from 1 to infinity a r alright ok so now you need to find what's a r ok so to find what's a r we need to use the last condition given to us we have already used used up both uh, boundary conditions okay we are left with the initial conditions so let me call this equation um, three okay so I'm going to put the initial condition which tells me that at time equals to zero this T is, big T is 100 cos pi x over L I put it into equation 3 that will then give me ok so I'm just going to put T equals 0 C plus the summation of all these terms So t is zero, so it's e to the power of zero. This is equals to one hundred cos pi x over l. Okay. Right. So e to the power of zero is just equals to one. So this means that c plus summation of some cosine terms equals to 100 cos pi x over l ok so I hope this reminds you of the cosine series ok so this is uh, same as cosine series remember cosine series you have this So A naught is 1 over L, 0 to L, Fx, Vx, and your An is 2 over L, 0 to L, cos, so Ar, right? So over here, your a naught. Okay, this is like your 
A not here, it's like your C here, right? And the AR here, it's like your big AR in your uh, PDE, okay? And your FX here is actually equals to 100 cos pi x over L. So you can see that uh, when you put this expression of fx inside here and here, you can find your c, this one, and you can find your big ar, which is the same as your small ar here. Right? So that's one way you can find the, the c and ar. Okay, once you have found the c and the ar, you put it back into equation 3. Okay, and that will be your answer. Now, um, for this question, you actually do not need to do this integration. Okay, why? Okay, because you, if you are sharp enough, okay, you can see that this term, when you expand it out, you actually get C plus Okay, so when a r is equal to 1, you get a1 cos r is 1, so it's pi x over l, and then when you have r is 2, you get a2 cos 2 pi x over l, and when, a, when r is 3, you get a3 cos 3 pi x over l and so on right and this must be equals to 100 cos pi x over l okay so you can see that this term is this term okay. so therefore you can see that C is zero, okay, because there's no constant on the right hand side, and your A one must be one hundred, and all your other A's are zero. Okay, so your equation three becomes. Okay, so equation 3 is your solution, so it becomes, uh, so C is 0, right? and the only non-zero term inside equation 3 is when R equals to 1, and when R equals to 1, A1 is 100, cos pi x over L, okay, R equals to 1, right? minus k pi over l squared t. So this is your solution for question 5.